Hello, my name is Damien from Cloud Technology Experts. In this video, I would like to show you how to deploy Kubernetes on Amazon Web Services using a, util a utility called COPS, K-O-P-S. COPS means Kubernetes Operations. The good thing with COPS is that it can help you to both provision your infrastructure at the same time deploy the entire Kubernetes cluster onto your infrastructure. In my previous video, I showed you how to use kubeadmin to deploy Kubernetes on Amazon Web Services. In this video, I want to show you how to use COPS to deploy a Kubernetes cluster on Amazon Web Services. I assume that you're familiar with Amazon Web Services and I assume that you're familiar with Kubernetes architecture. If you're not, I have some other presentations on our website. So let's get started with the presentation. Basically, when we're trying to use COPS, unlike in kubeadmin, we don't have to create all the virtual instances required for Kubernetes to run. But we need to create one instance. In that instance, we're going to install COPS and all the other utilities that we're going to need. Utilities like kubectl, so the first part is install COPS, install dependencies. In the second part, we need to make sure that we have a DNS entry for the domain that we would like to host our cluster on. And this has to be a registered domain. Now you have the option to either register it inside of Amazon Web Services using Route 53, or you have the option to host it in an outside registrar. In this video, we use an outside registrar, outside of Amazon Web Services. So I will show you how to make this work, but the process will be, will, will be different than when you have your, your domain hosted inside Route 53 of Amazon Web Services. Step three, we need to make sure that we create an S3 bucket because Corps will store all, the, all these configurations inside an S3 bucket. So we need to create an S3 bucket. We need to export it into a variable. Once we're done with that, we can now instantiate a command to create our Kubernetes cluster. And then we can test to see if everything's working correctly. All right, come on, let's go to Amazon Web Services and get started. Here's my dashboard. I've already logged in. Okay, so I'm going to launch an instance which we're going to use for our uh, management. So let's use a T to the micro and let's choose, let's just say launch. The only thing I will change here is change the security group to what I already created here. It can be anything, kubeadmin, and I can just say launch. And I just acknowledge we're going to wait for the instance launch. But while it's doing that, let's get ready to do the rest of the process. Let's copy that IP address here. And let's try to SSH into it as the node is trying to come up. So the key here is going to be cops. Cops.pem EC2 user and we're just gonna paste this here and we're inside. So now we've been able to SSH into our virtual instance, which we're gonna use for deploying COPS, kubectl, and AWS CLI tools. But in this case, because we use the Amazon Web Services AMI for Amazon Linux, we already have our AWS CLI tools installed. So we're not gonna do that process anymore. To continue from, the, from here, I already listed all the steps and the commands which would make this video a lot shorter than otherwise. So basically, I'm just gonna copy and paste these commands. If you wanna see the detailed instructions, you can look at the blog on our website. So basically here, we're downloading the kubectl uh, utility, and then we're gonna change the permissions on kubectl and after that we're going to move it to a bin 
directory. Okay, that's done. Um, group CTA has been installed. Now we need to install COPS. Now I'm just going to copy those commands. Again, what we're doing here is we download the binary and that could take time to download. And then once we finished it with the download, we change the permission to make it executable here on this line. And then we simply move it to a binary folder. Okay, so it's going good. So far, we are do doing very well. So now we move to the next step, which is the step to make sure that our DNS is properly configured for the domain we're trying to use. Now we're going to run some AWS commands, so we need to make sure that we configure our Amazon Web Services uh, keys. So let's run AWS configure. AWS com configure. And this will ask me to put my access key and uh, secret access key. Now we need to install a tool called JQ. JQ, Java Query. sudo yum install minus y jq. Okay, perfect. That has been installed properly. Now we're going to run a command to get our subdomain details. Let me explain here. We need a domain and we need a subdomain. Now my domain has been registered with an outside registrar outside of Amazon Web Services. As a matter of fact, I can show you the registrar I use, which is called Namecheap. So all the information is here for the domain I'm using, which is Cloud Tech Experts. So inside of Amazon Web Services, I need to go to Route 53. Route 53. Okay, I go to Route 53. And I need to check the domain, uh, the hosted zones. In my own case here, I already have a domain, a subdomain created called cte.cloudtechexperts.com. cte.cloudtechexperts.com. So that is the domain, that is the subdomain I'm going to use. Now, cte.cloudtechexperts.com is a subdomain of cloud techexperts.com so you see the main domain was registered inside Namecheap but the subdomain was registered inside Route 53 of Amazon Web Services now this is a scenario where we have a domain outside or registered outside of Amazon Web Services if you were to host it inside of Amazon Web Services that is if you were to create your domain and subdomain inside of Amazon Web Services your life will be a lot easier. But the way we do it here, the scenario we're doing here is, is out, the, the domain is outside of Amazon Web Services. So we need to make sure that we run a command to get us the details of our subdomain. Then we need to go back to our name chip here and put the details. As you can see here, I already put the details, but I just want to go through the process so you can do it if this is your scenario. But you need to understand that the instructions depend on the registrar you're using. Okay, so when we run this command, it gave us these details here about our subdomain. You need to copy this for information here. Go to your domain, registrar, and enter those information as I've done here. This is for my own registrar. Your registrar might do it separately. But in my own, I need to go to the list of the domains I have, click on the domain, manage domain, come to advanced DNS. Then I need to click add a record four times, put the host name as CTE. This is going to be all the same. And then the four variables we just copy, you put them here one at a time one two three four and then you save it now you need to test to ensure that your domain is actually resolving to do that you need to run a command to check 
you can do dig ns and put the domain name cloudtechexperts.com in our own case and it says it is resolving so this is very good it is resolving so now dns covered we can move on to s3 to create an s3 bucket again for this um, tutorial we already have our s3 bucket created so I'll just go there and show you so these are the list of buckets that I have. I can use any of them, but I'm going to use this one here. Clusters.cte.cloudtechexperts.com Now, you can create a new one. If you don't have, just click Create Bucket and put the details here. Okay, so now once you have that created, remember you need to export it. You need to export it into this variable here called COPS State Store. Cops state store that's a variable so we already have that we export it now we're good last step before we create a cluster cops need an SSH key so you need to run SSH key gen and pretty much you just click enter 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 for all of them and then the public key and the, and the private key will be generated. Now we are set to create a cluster. And to create a cluster, we're just going to copy this command, which you have here ready, COPS create cluster, specify the cloud, which in this case is Amazon Web Services, specify the zone, then the name for the cluster, and then the zone, the DNS zone, which is the one I showed you that we created, and the type of the DNS here is public because we, this is a publicly hosted uh, DNS. So we're just going to paste that command here, has all the variables that we need. And we're just going to wait for COPS to create our cluster. So let's wait and see how long that takes. Great. See how quickly that, 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 that happens? Even though if you scroll up, you discover that there were so many steps that it has to perform in order to create this cluster. But it does it so quickly. But this is not the end. We are not done yet. It's saying here, if you go through the instructions, it said we still have to run this command. We have to still run this command to finalize our installation. So we're just going to run that command now. Just copy it and paste there and it will go through the final process of creating our cluster now we are using everything by default but you have the option to edit the configuration files tell it how many uh, cluster nodes you like to, you like to create and then it's just going to do that for you so we're going to wait for it to finish and it's finished Cluster is starting. It should be ready in a few minutes. Notice something here. It said the cluster is starting. So if we have to issue any command at this point, most likely nothing will happen until the cluster is fully ready. All right, so the, the command is now returning. Okay, so now the master node is ready. One of these worker node is ready, but the other one is not yet ready. So let's keep checking. Second one is not yet ready, but very soon it will. So let's check again. And now all of them are ready. So that sounds good. Let's look at all the pods that has been deployed. kubectl get pods minus minus all all name spaces great well er, um, these and these are still pending coop dns are still pending let's see wait for them to be all running these ones are still pending creating them remember I told you earlier this will actually take up to five minutes for a small cluster like this 
if you're doing it for a large production cluster that could take much longer so we just watch and see when everything seems good great look I like it when everything works like this all of them are running so our cluster is fully fully ready see that look at that all is good so we have been able to deploy a kubernetes cluster using cops on amazon web services let's test the cluster by creating a pod to see if the pod gets created if a pod gets created that is a, is a test to show that the, the cluster is up and running so let's go do kubectl run uh, pod one minus minus image equals nginx and let's do kubectl get pods and our pod is working correctly this shows that everything works perfectly let's quickly spin up another pod let's just call this pod 2 and let's check that pod 2 is also created look at that all of them are running we have a perfectly running kubernetes cluster deployed using cops and amazon web services i hope you like the video like i told you we have a lot of these videos coming from cloud technology experts please subscribe to our channel like our videos and make sure you keep coming back for more technical videos like this one i'm signing off Again, my name is Damien from Cloud Technology Experts. Thanks for watching.